so but for, for the purposes of this talk, it's um, between six months and two and a half years or thereabouts. And um, that is the age when dogs have issues. That's the age when dogs have problems. So what happens to a dog then as it becomes an adolescent? Um, there are hormonal changes. Generally speaking, we, uh, we do neuter or spay our animals. Um, fairly young, depending on the person and the dogs and all that kind of stuff, but, but hormonal changes occur even with a spayed or neutered animal. They are still, the, the, the endocrine system still keeps going, the hormonal systems keep going, and you will see differences. That's one thing, is the dogs are going through a lot of changes, and generally speaking in those changes they're actually seeking limits, just the same way the children seek limits. The other thing about adolescents that I think we need to always bear in mind is that adolescents look like their adults. They look, at the age of nine months, many dogs look like they're an adult, but they are not an adult. When you, when you expect an animal that, does, that looks like an adult to act like one, you're always going to be disappointed, because they're not going to. And yet, it's something that we can't even help ourselves. Um, sometimes when I find out that one of the dogs that we are getting in for an evaluation is only nine or ten months, it completely changes the way I'm looking at the dog. But if somebody were coming in to adopt the animal and they had a dog that looked like that previously, then they're not going to have that same expectation. They're going to think that the dog is going to act like an adult dog. So it's important to remember that that brain is still growing um, and that the dog that is inside there is going to change before he becomes the dog that he'll always be. Um, so how do you socialize an adolescent? Okay, so it gets, it gets tough. It gets really tough. You didn't have your dog when he was a puppy. You got him when he's an adolescent. So you got this nine-month-old energy-burning, calorie-burning, I-need-to-go-run-around dog. How do you socialize him? How do you make sure that he gets enough exercise? Um, you know, what do you do? To, and it's, it's, it can be daunting. And yet, that's, what's, that's what shelters adopt out most of the time, are these, ex, ex, you know, people take the dogs and don't realize what they're getting in for. What do you do, you know, if you're going to try to solve these problems? The first thing you do is you, you act as though you're the parent of a small kid, and you do environmental management. That's the first thing, and that's really, really important. Um, so lots of our clients come in and the dog spends a great deal of time barking at the windows when people go by, or they bark in the cars when people go by, or they run, and run the fence line. I just had a client last week who was very resistant to the idea of bringing the dog in the house when she wasn't home because she said that dogs needed to be outside. And I kept saying, why do dogs need to be outside? And she said, well, because that's where they're supposed to be. And I said, well, you know, the thing about dogs is that they, as a parasite, they've done very well. And they believe that they should be with us. So bring them, bring her, and, and I don't know still whether or not she's going to do it, but her dog has been practicing bad behavior for the last year, running up and down the fence line and barking at people going by. So environmental control is the very first thing. And if you think you've got environmental control, but you still have a dog that's out of, contr out of control, then consider where you may not have it. Because environmental control might not only be don't bark here, don't bark there, don't bark there, but if you're walking your dog on the same walk every day, and they are, there's, a, there's a house here, a house here, a house here, and a house here, and at each of those houses there's a dog barking, so they bark back, then you don't have environmental control. It's really important. Teach them to be happy to be a subordinate. Um, consistent, pleasant, practical learning experiences and supervised play. So trauma, because trauma gets stored in the amygdala, uh, which is the fear center. And it is, each trauma is stored in its entirety. So the, in, the, it, when you're thinking back to those memories, the ones that, 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 you know, when you were really scared or whatever, you can actually relive that. You can close your eyes and call up the entire memory. You cannot do that with the other memories. Um, you know how when you're trying to remember something and you go, oh, well, let me see. Uh, it was about three years ago I was doing this. And, I, and you're, pulling, you know, you're pulling little bits and pieces from different parts of your brain, and they're all coming together, and then you're trying to remember what the, it, it, in its entirety. But a trauma, you can remember the whole thing.
which is why dogs might be terrified of a black dog or terrified of dogs with prick ears or, 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 you know, or something coming around a corner because it's usually not only the actual event but what went on around the event.